Hi YouTubers, how are you today? I know it's been a while. Today I'm finally back on YouTube. Today I'll be demonstrating how to make one of um, Chinese appetizer that's been very popular with everybody these days and for a while. It's called Crab Rangoon. Now, obviously some may have tried it and some may have not tried it, but for those that may have tried it, you know, I don't know exactly what restaurants you go to, but sometimes right now with things as tight as it is, a lot of restaurants just give you the cream cheese and they deep fry it in the wonton wrapper. But like me, like I've always been, I always like to give the best to my family and I always like to never cheat on the ingredients. So today we'll make crab rangoon and I'll be as good as uh, well equipped in terms of providing the best ingredients I can. Obviously, with crab rangoon, we expect to have a little crab. These days, crab meat is very expensive. Whether it's the can or whether it's a jumbo lump, you're paying around 35 bucks a pint, if that much. So, for this type of uh, appetizer, they mainly use imitation crab meat, right? Because when you mix it in with the cream cheese and you deep fry it, you really can't tell. But you should add a little bit more imitation crab meat to get some of that crab flavor. It's been, you know, that's what the whole purpose of the imitation crab meat is, is a, is a substitute for regular crab meat. So that's what I'll be doing. I'll be adding a scallion to it to give it a little bit more color and a little crunch. So here's the imitation crab meat. You can get this at your um, refrigerator section of your grocery store. The uh, cream cheese, I used half a bar of cream cheese. Now, you may want to choose Philadelphia. You can pay a little bit more for the name, or you can use the store, the store board, which is much cheaper, and a scallion stalk. All right. We'll need an egg as our glue. We'll add a little garlic powder. That's about a half a teaspoon. And some white pepper. That's about a half a teaspoon. To give it a little bit more um, flavor and believe it or not we'll add some Leah Perrins with just a sauce believe it or not it's not difficult at all it's fairly simple and it tastes delicious now remember the imitation crab meat's already cooked right cream cheese is cream cheese so basically when you're deep frying right you don't want to get uh, you don't want to keep it fried for so long that it gets so dark you know you want to keep it nice and golden color Right? Because everything, everything else inside the wonton is, is the crab rangoon is all cooked already. So you don't really need that much time. It's just a matter of trying to get the color. But when you do deep fry, you always have to um, test the temperature, you know, how many wonton you're putting in. And so the first batch is always are usually a little bit darker, but we'll try not to do that this time. But um, we'll see. All right. So here we, here's what we're doing now. Okay. So we're going to take the cream cheese and I'll focus mainly on the ingredients so you don't have to see me. Okay. We'll take the cream cheese. There's a half a packet of cream cheese, right? Set it aside. Set the scallion stalk on side. We'll take the uh, imitation crab meat and we'll peel it in long slices like this. So the more bits that go into the cream cheese, the more imitation crab meat you'll get in each bite. I like to put a lot in. I don't like to deprive my family of all these good, delicious ingredients. If I was a restaurant and I had a lot of expenses, I may not put as much as I would do here. But I, if I have the opportunity and I could give you the best ingredients as possible, I will. We deserve the best. But in terms of real crab meat, it doesn't really make sense. Maybe fresh crab meat for crab cakes is different. That's one thing. But for crab rangoon, you don't really need fresh crab meat. So we sliced up, spread out the uh, crab sticks. Now we'll turn it on the side and we'll take our Santa's crew knife and we'll dice it. Now how we dice it is we'll curl our fingers like a bear claw and tuck our fingers inside so it won't cut. We'll lean the blade against our knuckle 
and we'll point it away from our hand so we don't cut it. So we'll hold the ingredients firmly so it doesn't move and we'll go forward as we cut. And most importantly, the blade must be sharp. Well, you may say, well, if the blade is sharp, I can cut myself quicker. If you think of it from that standpoint, it's true. But if you use a dull knife, you'll cut yourself worse because then it's slipping off the item that you want to cut. And we don't want that to happen. So a sharp knife is always a, is a safe knife. Now, I show you this way, right? So it's up to you if you want to add maybe a diced onion or a little less imitation crab meat, but I like to add a lot, okay? I feel there's more flavor. Then we take the scallion stalk, chop off the end, we washed it, because you never know. And we'll do the same thing, we'll hold the stalk down uh, fingers tucked in, blade against the knife, lean the uh, knife against your, against you, and go forward, and chop. And always push the uh, stalk with your fingers towards the blade to have a continuous flow of scallions to be chopped. Alright. So scallion is really an uh, come from comes from the onion family too. So we'll stick it in with the uh, cream cheese. So what you got here is a little bit of green, a little bit of orange from the crab imitation crab meat, and you have the uh, cream cheese, okay? Now, just clean up a little bit. We'll add the garlic powder. I use about a half a teaspoon. A half a teaspoon of white powder. If you want to use uh, black pepper, you can. I just find that with white powder, it might be a little bit more uh, stronger but it's a little bit stronger, mild flavor type of situation, if that makes a little sense. Okay. Then we're going to add a little Orschai sauce. And that's about a half a teaspoon too. So we have it all combined together. So we're going to, the cream cheese has been sitting at room temperature. So it makes it for a good uh, smashing and combining of all ingredients. As you can imagine, you know, in Chinese food, it's the preparation time that takes the longest. But it's the most rewarding because you're taking something from nothing and you're basically creating a dish. Ultimately, that creation is the flavor that you'll be creating. That final product, that final appetizer. So we're combining it with the cream cheese. It may be different than what you may get at the uh, takeout restaurant or restaurant. You may only see white in the actual uh, crab rangoon, or they may sell it as just regular uh, cheese wonton. All right. Keep on folding, combine it, and this will taste better than the restaurant. And if you don't want to make it and you do buy it from the store already made, God knows what they put into it in terms of uh, additives and preservatives. Okay? Just saying. So we use a half a packet of uh, wonton wrappers. Because it looks like I'll be the only one eating them. And this is a perfect combination. Five uh, imitation crab meat sticks half a stick of uh, Philadelphia of, of regular cream cheese, that's enough for about one and a half people. So if my daughter wants to sneak it in later, she could. But here it is. So we're gonna just combine it together. 
and we're going to use a knife and we'll taste it. Since it's all cooked, it doesn't really matter, but good combination of crab flavor from the imitation crab meat. Uh, cream cheese, I do taste the garlic and the white pepper, as well as the uh, Worcester sauce. All right, so we'll set this aside. All right, so now, assembly. We'll use a butter knife. And basically, what we're going to do here is, I'll show you two, two types. Now, when you buy the, the uh, wonton wrapper, right, not everybody's going to be making wontons. So it may be sitting on the shelves for a while. And we really don't know exactly how long it's been sitting until we buy it. Because you can't really tell on the packet until we open it and after we, we actually fold it. If it starts to crack, then you know it's been sitting around and lost a little bit of its moisture, okay? So we don't know. So, I mean, unless you go to an Asian store, maybe if they sell much more wonton wrappers than the typical store. But you're just going to have to gauge it. Even me, I can't tell because you can't tell through the wrapper. All right? So basically, we'll take a wrapper. We won't take the first one. That's usually the driest. We're going to make the basic triangle wrapper. Now, when, you, when we make the basic triangle wrapper, it's the edges after it's fried that are crunchy. Right? If you like that, and, and the middle part of the outside of the wrapper is a little bit not as crunchy because you're not, you're not doing that many folds. So if you like it that way, that's great. So we'll take the knife and we'll put a, about a small portion of it in the center. Then we'll take our egg and that's just a regular egg that's been beat, beat up and we'll brush it on the two sides. Okay, now we'll just fold it And press it. Make sure the ends are pressed well. This will prevent oil from going inside the ingredients. Okay, so you pressed it. So now you have the uh, wrapper with the point facing upward. The sides have been pressed together. Now we'll flip it on the other side and we'll add a little egg wash on the left corner. Then we'll have uh, two thumbs pressing the ingredients in the middle with our index and third finger on the underside of it. And as we want to wrap the right side of corner of the wrapper to the left side, we're going to press it in until it covers and then we'll press. Not the tips, but like this. Now this wrap is pretty good. I mean, it's a little chair and this look resembles like a little flower. Okay. So we'll set it aside. And you'll probably get two dozen of these made. Remember half a stick of cream cheese. Five imitation crab sticks. You could do more or less depending on how much you like it. A half a teaspoon of garlic powder. A half a teaspoon of white pepper. A dash of Worcester sauce. Right. So I'm going to show you again. As we get into the uh, wrappers, the more deeper we are, the more moisture is available. So here we have a small designation of uh, the cream cheese mixture in the crab rangoon. We're going to rub a little bit of the uh, egg wash on one corner, one side. Then we're going to rub the other side. Right. And then we'll fold. Now, if you guys are creative and you know, you want to do it together with uh, your children or your girlfriends, whatever, you can do it, right? So now we have it covered, it's all sealed, and the uh, wonton is up, pointed up. Now we we'll want the wonton wrapper to be pointed down, and in this position, we'll 
rub a little bit of the egg wash. We'll put our thumbs on the side of the filling and our index finger and third fingers on behind. And as we take the right side and we pull it over to the left side, we're going to press it in. Right? And then we'll squeeze. And then this little lip here, we'll try to flip up. And they have a little kind of flower bud. I'll do it again. A dash of the ingredients, the filling. Rub a little bit of the egg wash on the corners, the sides, along the sides. Just think of it as a little glue. Press the sides and seal it. It should be totally sealed. Now the Rangoon is pointed up. The wonton wrapper crab Rangoon is pointed up for the ceiling. Now you want to flip it over and you want the flat side facing you. You add a dash of egg wash to the left tab. Put your thumbs to the side of the filling, your index and third finger on the other side. And as you twist over the left flap, press it. And you have a beautiful flower. I'll do it one more time. Now you could add, I mean, you may not think I'm adding a lot of uh, filling. And that's really up to you because it's all been cooked. So all you're really doing is, with, from a frying standpoint, is to get that golden color. You're not so much worried about getting the filling cooked. But the wonton is a concern because it's, you're dealing with pork. Now, there might be a little air pocket, so you try to squeeze the air out. Right. So you have the uh, wrapper up, triangle up. You sealed it on all sides. Now we'll flip it so now we have the flat side facing us. Now we'll add a little egg wash to the left corner, tab. Now we'll put the filling between our, th our thumbs and the index finger and third finger on the underside. And then we'll twist motion with your right hand, the right tab overflapping the left side and squeezing it. And then lifting this lip up a little bit. So you crack a little bit. Now, the easier design is this. So we add the filling in the middle. And we'll take the egg wash and cover the, the two corners, adjoining corners. And we'll press it together, making sure that it's sealed. So, you have your Crab Rangoon wrapper folded, pointed up, triangle shape, that's it. But when we fry it, it's the edges that will be crispy, and the center will be not as crispy. So you can do it that way if you want. So I'll make a couple of... Uh, Triangle once again, add the filling, add a little white uh, egg wash to the sides, fold over, press the edges until it's definitely sealed. Now, if you don't have egg and the only thing you have is water, then that's fine. Make sure the air pocket is out, squeeze it. And there you go. So you can decorate it too. I'll show you a little decoration. This is faster. But if you have the time, I'd say it's worth it to do it the other way. I, I like a little bit more design because that one, there's more um, 
opportunity for get a lot of crispness when you are deep frying it. And one more, I want to show you exactly what I'm trying to do here. Remember, after you uh, you uh, make it, don't wait until you fry it because once you put it on a plate, you know, it starts to uh, adhere to the plate. I mean, you could try uh, uh, parchment paper to line it and it may not stick, but it, it usually does stick too. So shortly after you make it, you should be able to fry it right away. In terms of... Uh, Saving it for another day, well, I would say that um, it's a little tricky because if you throw it all together in a bag and you uh, uh, freeze it, it's all going to stick together. So I would say that not so. If you want to pre-fry it, pre-fry it, then store it in a bag, then freeze it, and then when you actually use it, and you're going to have to fry it again, and then you'll get a little darker color. Okay? But don't freeze it when it's in the raw state, when the uh, wrapper hasn't been uh, cooked. Because it will all stick together, and you have one big fat clump. And you don't want that. And then all your efforts will go right down the tube. Now, you may get a little air. Just make sure the air is out, because when you start frying, that air bubble is going to create a bubble. In the wrapper. All right. See, this is this is how I learned it in the restaurant, and we made thousands of wonton at any one sitting. We made the crab rangoon with not as much crab, obviously. But when we made one time, we did it the same way. But we didn't use as much uh, ground pork because to get the color that we want, it may not require a lot of frying. And therefore, if you had a lot of pork in it, you're going to have a lot of undercooked pork. So the less pork you put in for a fried one time, the better. So I revised my uh, classes for YouTube demonstrations. I was trying uh, to offer and introduce some traditional dishes. And obviously I know that people are only familiar with the items that they know best, you know, from their experiences from their takeout restaurants and what they like. So I'm going to try to go back to those types of meals. And in my next video, which will be tomorrow, on YouTube. You could find me on Facebook Live at 1 o'clock tomorrow on Sunday. And the username will be at Amazing Chef Wu Ken. Or if you want a recorded video, I'll be on YouTube tomorrow also. And tomorrow I'll be making Kung Pao Chicken with peanuts and I know everybody loves chicken breast and chicken breast is kind of interesting because when we cook chicken breast it's a little bit more drier and it's not as juicy but I'll show you a secret that we I use when preparing chicken breast and you, it's guaranteed to be juicy and tender, more tender, and you can appreciate it even better. The spicy will be some hot chili peppers as well as some sriracha sauce. And you'll really enjoy it. And it's cheap to make. So why spend $13 for a quart of Kung Pao when you could actually make it for really a fraction of the price. 
Yes, I know, they're doing it for you, you don't have to do it, and that's what you're really basically paying for. But if you have the time and you want to learn how to eat healthier, and you control exactly what goes in to your meals, then I would suggest that watching me do it, it may be a little messy, it may be very time consuming, but in the end, you'll really, your family will appreciate it and you will feel a sense of accomplishment. The reason why I have my name as Chef Bouquin, if I can do it, then you can do it. It's pretty simple. So it's Chef Who Can, you can too. So if you guys were a little hesitant about cooking, well, these are fairly easy. I'm trying to show you the best way to do it. And I know that anybody can do what I do. Obviously, the first two tries might be a little, little sticky, rusty. But you know what? That's how we learn to do a lot of things. Practice makes perfect. And you might really enjoy cooking. With Chinese cooking, it's not so much the cooking, it's the preparation. You will spend more time preparing. It, you won't be able to see the benefits. But after everything's prepared, cut, then you'll really be able to appreciate the final dish that you make. And when the dish is made and everybody ate it without even talking, in the food business, when you make something that they love, you're not going to hear anybody say anything. It's when you make something that is not particularly delicious and everybody starts talking about anything to avoid eating it. But when you have something that they love and tastes wonderful, nobody's going to talk. They're just going to focus on eating now, I, I taught at the Art Community College many years ago. It interfered with my business, so I had to travel. But when I did have class, I introduced some traditional dishes. And people were kind of like hesitant. But you know what? Anything new, everybody's hesitant to try. Especially when it comes to food. So I told them, trust me. And if anything... In these days, when I say trust me, trust me. They tried it, they came up for seconds, and they sat down in the classroom, and they didn't say one word. As a matter of fact, that dish was uh, crabs. Now, I don't know how many people are from Maryland watching me, or are interested. Having Maryland crabs with Old Bay season. And coming from New York, it's delicious. But I introduced crabs Chinese style. And they said, you know, chef, that's a tall order. You know, nobody can beat the way we make crabs. And I said to them, I guarantee you, you're going to love it. And you're going to see crabs in a different light. And they said, that was a tall order, chef. Well, I made the crabs Chinese style. Cantonese style. Let's just say that the aroma that I created traveled through the halls of the college classes and students that were taking other classes smelled the aroma and they came towards my class and uh, they wanted to know when my next class was. But my original class, they came up, gave them a portion of the crabs with some beautiful rice. They ate it, sat down, ate it. It was quiet. You could drop a pin needle. They were enjoying it. And at the end of the class, they said, you know, chef, we told you that, you know, it's a tall order, but you know what? You were right. It's delicious. We never had crabs this way before. So as a matter of fact, I might even do that on YouTube. I did that on YouTube already. So if you look at my, you know, how to make crabs by Chef Bouquin, you'll see. And that was a big fat crowd pleaser. So, you never know until you try. And I encourage you to try different meals. Although it might be strange, you know. 
that taking that first step is always the best part. Okay, so a half a stick of cream cheese, five imitation crab sticks, a dash of white pepper, a dash of garlic powder, and a dash of Worcester sauce, right? And one egg. It's finished. Egg done. This is one one half a package of uh, wonton wrappers, right? So now we'll just move some stuff. We'll bring the oil here. Now this is the tricky part. When you're starting up the oil, and I use vegetable oil, or canola oil, I use canola oil. Getting the initial um, perfect temperature in the beginning is a little tough because you have it on high to get it going pretty quick. But then the temperature rises. So when you throw in a wonton, a crab rangoon wonton, it may, the outer wrapper may cook quicker and we're not so much concerned with what is being cooked inside because it's already cream cheese and cooked imitation crab meat we just want to get the color but the first um one time that you put in will give you an idea of how fast things will cook and so i want to lower the temperature it may take a little longer but it won't be as bad So I got a plate with a piece of a napkin on it. So, you know, it will drain additional oil. And what we don't want here is for them to burst because then if it bursts, all the cream cheese will burst out. And that's not a good thing. So that's why it's so important to make sure it's sealed tightly, you know, and uh, we'll see what happens, you know. The oil is canola oil, temperature, um, I'd say 250 low, and then if you have to increase it, you will. But you can actually have it a little bit higher, but depending on the number of wonton that you put in here, crab rangoon, the more you put in, it drops the temperature. So, I mean, that's a good thing too, all right? So you just have to gauge it. So like the first batch may not be the perfect, but the second batch will be much be much improved, okay? So how do we how do you know when the oil is ready? Well, we'll take a piece of the uh, wonton tip and we'll throw it in here. Well, obviously it's uh, still heating up. It's slowly cooking, very slowly. So we want it to be a little bit more hotter. So it's going to be hot. We have a, a bamboo strainer, obviously. Bamboo handle. Will. Looks kind of ancient, but it's a, one of the strongest uh, materials used, natural materials. And you have a wire strainer. Very practical, lightweight, right? But sometimes with the uh, wonton being fried, you might need a, a, a tongs to flip them over so that all sides are um, well fried. What we're going to use as a dipping sauce is pretty interesting. We have the sweet chili sauce. So I'll set that aside. You may have a honey mustard sauce if you like. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to follow what tradition says. Cooking is all creating. Okay? So be creative. Never follow a recipe straightforward because I've come across a lot of people that 
follow the recipe and I tried the food and I don't know if it's me, but other people agreed there was no taste. A recipe is a guide. You have to taste what you make in the beginning, in the middle, and at the end to adjust the flavor. Um, with this uh, crab rangoon, there's really not much to uh, taste. I tasted it before I went into the wrapper. I felt that there was a good amount of crab flavor on the cream cheese. I did taste the uh, garlic powder and the white pepper. And that was enough for me. But you have to taste. Chef Wu Ken is not one to uh, just follow the recipe. Oh yeah, I like a lot of crab, so I add a lot of crab sticks. You may not like a lot of crab sticks. You may want to add one or two. You may not like white pepper. You may not even like Worcestershire sauce. That's all up to you. You like it a little saltier? Maybe you want to add a little soy sauce instead of uh, Worcestershire sauce. Whatever your taste buds are, that will dictate exactly how the uh, dish will come out. And you got to also understand who you're going to be serving it to. So if your friends like hot and spicy, hey, maybe you should add a little sriracha sauce if they like that. You know, that's what you got to think about. It's more not just on the recipe. The recipe is a guide. Okay. And uh, basically, uh, in terms of measurements, for me, if you know how to taste, you don't really need to know the measurements. But I did tell you like a half a teaspoon of white pepper, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, maybe a dash or a half a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, right? Scallion, if I like more scallion, I could put two stalks in. It depends on what I feel like. If I like scallions, that's up to you, you know? So from a measurement standpoint, I've been told by my friends that I should tell them what measurements are. But um, try to eye it, you know, and, uh, and taste is very, very important, okay? You know, there are places where they never had spoons to measure or cups to measure. So what do they do? They had it based on natural taste. All right, so let's see what another piece of... Uh, oh, so that's a little too hot because it, it took, uh, took off pretty fast. We don't want to uh, go that fast because it will burn, right? So that just went right down and just started bubbling and came right up. All right, we don't want it that fast. All right, so now we'll put one of the triangle ones in. And I'll show you when I say the crispiness part. Will be on the edges versus one of the flower type. So you're just going to have to keep on, you know, working over the stove because when you're deep frying, you know, anything can go. So you don't want anything mishaps to happen. You always want to be in control of the situation. Now, I used imitation crab meat, right? The cream cheese was the base, right? So let's say you don't want to use uh, imitation crab meat. Maybe you want to have a little sweeter type of a uh, uh, wonton. So now you eliminate the crab wonton and we could put a jam in the cream cheese. So by mixing jam into cream cheese and then putting it in a wonton wrapper, then you have a different flavor. Okay. Or if you don't want cream cheese, you can use feta cheese and then use a uh, frozen spinach and make sure it's drained well and you have basically a, a Greek wonton wrapper. So the sky's the limit in terms of what you can use the wonton wrapper for and in this case we're using crab rangoon because it seems like it's a very popular dish and maybe many people are hesitant to try it because they don't know what kind of secret recipe is in it but it really it all is cream cheese and imitation crab meat with a little Worcestershire sauce, with a garlic powder, 
and a little white pepper. Some uh, takeout restaurants are selling it as cheese one time. All you're getting is fried cream cheese. Because if they actually put crab in it, they would have to mention it in their menu. But obviously if it's cream, if cream cheese wonton, or cheese wonton, it all is is cream cheese wrapped in wonton wrapper and deep fried. Okay? So, you see that when you watch it, it comes out pretty well. But you notice that the, uh, the triangle one is the edges that are going to be crispy. Whereas on the, uh, the flour one, many parts of the flour are all crispy. So if you like crispy, I'd go with this way of design. If you don't care, you just do the basic triangle design. Now I feel the oil is okay. So now I could start putting some in. And the more you put in, it will drop the temperature. So that's, that's a good thing. So you saw the preparation process is just a matter of preparing the mixture. Then it's just wrapping it in, in the wonton wrapper, and that's it. So this would probably have taken at a regular speed just to get half of the uh, wonton wrapper package, like half an hour. If anything, 40 minutes the most. So it's a little slower because there's many of them inside, so I'll raise the heat a little bit in that situation. And these are our definite crowd pleaser. People love them. So if you have a get together with this pandemic and everybody's okay, you know, taking all the precautions, you serve it, they'll love it. You won't even hear from them. They'll just be totally blown out of the water based on crab rangoon. And you know how simple it is to make. And then I think they spent slaved tons of hours in the kitchen. And between you and I, you know what's involved. So, all right, so we lowered it a little too much, but we also added a couple. So this should be even a golden crispy crust. Now the importance of sealing it is that you're not going to let the oil go in. So the only the outside will be fried. And this batch won't be, you won't feel oily taste. Tomorrow, at 1 o'clock, I'll be making a Kung Pao chicken. So, feel free to tune in. Not exactly 1 o'clock, I mean, that's not, that's, that will be live with uh, Facebook Live. But if you are waiting for it on YouTube, it will be um, on YouTube. Tomorrow. Tell your friends, and if you go on YouTube, Please uh, subscribe to my uh, videos and give me a thumbs up. Now, I don't know if you guys know, but the more thumbs up and the more subscribers, that attracts a lot of advertisers. And that's always good for the person uh, putting the video out. So, think about that and just help out a self-employed, struggling chef. All right? Now I also know that YouTube has live too, so I'm trying to figure that one out. And I will be live eventually on YouTube. All right, see this one here? This one popped. So that's not a good one, but you know, set this aside.
So, you know, for a Saturday afternoon, hey, what the heck, you know. Make these for the family, let them enjoy it. Great weather. I'm looking forward to the rest of the year. Hope things are controlled. Everybody gets vaccinated by June. That'd be great. How are you guys doing in terms of dealing with this pandemic? I know everybody's tired of the face mask. Join the club. But you gotta do it, you know? It's not gonna happen by the snap of your fingers. And I just want to mention to you, also on YouTube, on the Chef Bouquin, you know, sometimes, you know, we think about our past memories that we had, fond memories. And for me, because I love to eat and enjoy good food, and obviously I was only exposed to Chinese food in Chinatown, other, and uh, other kinds of foods. Uh, you know, relatives talk about all the Chinese dishes, and I learned those Chinese names, how it was pronounced. And so, I said, well, let me expand. So other than just cooking, I feel like uh, introducing uh, the Cantonese uh, language to you guys. Very basic, obviously. I'm not a professor. And I'll teach and introduce you to the Cantonese language phonetically. So it's just a matter of how you pronounce it. So if I write it, it may be just how it's pronounced, but it may not be the correct spelling. And uh, if you go to your next restaurant and they do speak a little Cantonese, you'll be able to uh, uh, surprise them with uh, some dishes that you may uh, be interested in or go to Chinatown or whatever. Um, obviously, you know the Chinese American menu. Is it authentic? Some of it is, some of it's not. But uh, for the most part, uh, I'll teach you the basic numbers from a Cantonese standpoint. That's pretty easy. Some greetings. And, you know, what the heck? You, should, you know, you, you, rather than not know anything, and rather than trying to spend the time learning Mandarin, which is the national language, you might be interested in learning Cantonese. You say, how probable, what's the, what's the uh, probability, you know, how is it going to help me? It may not help you, but it may help you in a restaurant. And that's always good. From a business standpoint, it may not, may not be, you know, practical, but... I'm not talking about a business standpoint, I'm just talking about a food standpoint, and just general greetings. Because knowing some, another language, as elementary as it may be, is always a good start. Did you know that food uh, brings people together? So if you are traveling from business, you know, you go to a restaurant that you never had before, well, the host will introduce you to some, some uh, ethnic foods. And you may just say, wow, what, what is this? But you get talking about how things are made, the flavors, the origins. It's very interesting. And then, you know, the differences seem to disappear. And then you could talk about the differences, but you don't want to lose sight of, you know, the delicious flavor. So you may just say, hey, let's agree to not, let's agree, let's agree to disagree. And, you know, communication through food is always a wonderful way to see the world. Keep talking. And God knows we need a little bit of that today. One or two may open, but considering the fact that the majority are all sealed, it's not bad. So again, crab rangoon, a half stick of cream cheese, doesn't have to be a brand name. In terms of uh, imitation crab sticks, the more the better. 
it's up to you. It depends. I use garlic powder. I use white pepper. I use a little Worcestershire sauce. A teaspoon of each. A half a teaspoon of each. An egg as your glue. Wonton wrapper. Like I said, you got to be kind of careful, but how can you really be careful when the package is sealed? So you don't really know until you uh, take it out of the package. And if they're kind of dry, they'll crack, and that's kind of bad. But if you go further into the uh, pile, it may give it be a little moisture, and you'll be, be able to work with those. Um, everything is all uh, cooked, so all you're doing is, from a, from a frying standpoint, is the color. You want to have a golden color. That's why the tongs are pretty pretty cool because you can control each one of them, you know, submerge it in the oil to the areas that are not being fried well. Okay, so we'll remove the uh, towel, paper towel, to absorb some of the excess oil. And now we'll kind of plate it, all right? So we'll take these. Here you go. Chef Wukan's famous crab rangoon. Does it look as good as it looks? Does it taste as good as it looks? You betcha. If you have any questions, email me at pearlwu17 at gmail.com or go to my website at www.chefbucan.com. I'll be more than happy to field any kind of questions you may have. Check me out on my website to find out when my next Facebook Live will be, which will be tomorrow at 1. But I'll also be posting on YouTube also. And tomorrow will be the uh, Kung Pao chicken with peanuts and hot sauce. All right? That's a very easy dish. And um, we'll be using the breast meat, and you'll really love it. And hopefully, based on the viewership, I'll continue to go with the Chinese-American dishes that you guys love so much. And uh, occasionally, I'll drop uh, uh, another dish. I mean, springtime and summer's upon, almost upon us. So maybe you don't want to eat heavy or have heavy sauces. You want to have a fresh, clean taste. And at that time, I'll introduce Vietnamese uh, summer spring rolls with the peanut sauce. And that's fairly very, very easy. And that's like uh, the Vietnamese egg roll, but it's not fried. It's really delicious. It's a lot of vegetables, little rice noodles, some shrimp, some chicken, some pork. You'll really, roast pork, you'll really enjoy it. And then the, the sauce is even better. So stay tuned. You have two avenues at Amazing Chef Who Can on Facebook and my website, www.chefwhocan.com. And you'll be able to see when my next class will be for my Facebook Live. I'll give us a shot and make sure you subscribe and uh, give me a, a positive view if you like what you heard and what, like what you saw. Okay? I'm getting better. Thank you very much and I appreciate your time. And it's good to see you.
and things will be much better in 2021. It was the year of the ox, all right? And that is even better. I mean, last year was the year of the rat, obviously, you know, it was terrible. But this year, I hope things are better. Just uh, follow what you can, go with your heart, protect yourself. You know, you're helping yourself and others, you know, and uh, let's eradicate this uh, COVID. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.